After a quarter of a century of us Googling just about anything, the tech giant behind it all unveiling a new era of searching the internet. It's still Googling, but now with the help of a full-blown AI assistant. You can ask AI more longer and more complex queries. It's like having my very own sports analyst right in search. You get the visual inspiration of Google Images and the world's most comprehensive set of products and retailers. You can choose to turn this on and you'll always be in control of the experience. This is the future of Google Search, a search that goes beyond information to intelligence. The future of Google Search. All right, NBC uh, business and data correspondent Brian Chung is out there now, joins us uh, from California, AI mode, coming from the kingdom of internet search. Like, What was the biggest takeaway for you today? Yeah, Gotti, this is me in the flesh. This is not AI. But look, Google's vision for the future, they want AI to be in every part of your life, from work to home. They want the Google search functions and the many apps that you use to incorporate Gemini. That is their model, essentially. And people may have noticed it already, right? If you've been Googling recently in the last few months, you've been seeing those uh -huh. Gemini suggestions for answers to the question that you're putting in the search box. What they want to do here is turn that up to like 900. Basically, they want you to ask full-on questions, queries that could even be a multi, you know, multiple sentences long that would otherwise take eight, nine 10 separate Google queries. They want people to be interacting that way, using Gemini to answer questions like, how do I build out a full vacation? What is the best tent for me to go camping based off of these specific criteria? And again, this is a vision that they have scaled all the way up to even at some point, these XR glasses that are going to use Android. They want you to be able to see it in front of your face someday as well. I mean, so many announcements today, and yet the one that keeps bubbling up in, in my algorithm so far is like this fashion stuff. Uh, I know you're a fashion icon, Brian. Uh, tell me you tried this new try it on function today. Oh, look at that. <laughs> well, you look, you're showing the photos right there. I mean, how could that not be a fashion icon? But yeah, there's this new function uh, in Google Shopping that they're unveiling where basically you can try it on yourself. You take a full body photo and that's all it takes. And then you upload it. And as you're searching through things when you're Google Shopping, you pick that cardigan and then it slaps it on your body. Uh, you can see an example right there. It's as easy as me uh, getting a photograph there. That is Lydia Rincon. She's the VP of Google Shopping that's going through that experience with me. I have to say, I would not normally wear a cardigan like that without an undershirt. I think that's pretty mm. heinous. Uh, Although, again, the uh, no, idea no, no, is that no. you can see what it would look like if you did want to wear it that way. So that was pretty cool. I'm telling you, this is this is the thing that makes me very scared because clearly the AI knows what the people want to see. And that is the deep, deep V of that cardigan right there. I don't think uh, the AI, I don't so think good. the AI people want to <laughs> see that. Thank you, AI, for, for that uh, treat. Um, and not to, not to tech geek out too much here, but like I've been thinking about this a lot today, and, and today is fascinating beyond the hype because this is a glimpse at like a true bona fide, what they call in Silicon Valley, like the, the innovator's dilemma. Perfect example. Every time we, we Google something, Google makes like billions of dollars in ad money for yeah. all those things that you, res the results that you get back, right? If you AI something, uh, you get a pretty clean summary. You don't have all those ads. Maybe those ad dollars disappear. And then also on the flip side of that, like AI is costing way, way, way more to compute versus just a bunch of hyperlinks. So it does seem like both sides of that yeah. are uh, not as lucrative as what they're doing today. Like, wh what are they saying about that? Yeah, I mean, the challenge here is that when it comes to what Google's model is right now, as you mentioned, a lot of that is selling advertising. And in fact, some of that got them in trouble. They are facing this uh, suit uh, where a federal judge mm -hmm. actually already declared that certain aspects of their publisher tools are illegal and are a monopoly. Now, Google is going to appeal that decision. However, it does underscore that Google probably has legal, but also futuristic reasons to want to shift away from the model of using these ad revenue dollars. Look no further than the pricing of what they release. So again, there's a Gemini Pro model that I believe is $20 a month, uh, AI Pro. They also have an Ultra model that's going to be $250 a month. So this subscriber model, kind of like what we're seeing with streaming, that is likely to be the future for them. So they're not worried about it cannibalizing it. Yet. But yes, the way that we interact with search is going to be very different. But AI, we're just not going to see those links like you're seeing on the screen ahead of you. And that's going to lead to fewer ad dollars in the sense that they've been traditionally making money.
Yeah, it seems like playing the long game when I can't even tell what uh, tomorrow's going to look like. Brian Chung, thank you so much. And, uh, yeah, please get that sweater, and, and maybe we can share it next time you're here in L.A. I think it would go great in the studio with the colors. We'll do, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got Thanks you, so dude. Much. I got you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.